Hey friends. Merry Christmas. It's December 25th. And we're having a lovely, amazing Christmas morning after a lovely and amazing Christmas Eve yesterday. A lot of family gathering in a, on a scale that we have not experienced since the start of the pandemic. It's been a really remarkable holiday this year, a really beautiful one. And what I spoke about yesterday on my post um, was the, the spirit of, of giving, the kind of spirit of the season. And, and, and so today, what's been showing up, I mean, it's really interesting because, you know, what I said yesterday was when I look back over, I mean, name a period of time, a month, the last year, or my entire life, what I notice is the gifts that I've given, where I have given myself, something of myself, those gift those are the those gifts are the are the they're also the biggest gifts I've received. And so in that mechanism, that sort of spiritual mechanism, lies the principle that our generosity is the source of our abundance, which puts the source of our abundance squarely within our own control. And I've been, I, um, I was writing a note to my, to my dad earlier today for his secret Santa. Shh, don't tell him. He's not going to see this video before we do secret Santa. And I was just remarking on how someone can arrive at the age of 80 and, and and at least from the outside I mean I'm not inside his mind but at least from the outside appear to have just total serenity equanimity to kind of know and project a deep satisfaction with life. Nothing missing. I, I made a joke out of it because it's, it's hard to, you know, it's like, what do you, what gift do you get for someone who, <laughs> who's a, who's so fully joyful? Um, and I found the perfect gift with the help from my wife. But, but that, but, but, you know, writing that note earlier today and, and then also witnessing last night when there were three generations, almost four, but the grandfather didn't show up because it was going to be too late of a party for him. But three generations of my family and Katie's family coming together and... Realizing one one of her um, one of Katie's cousins mentioned something like a cousin in law he married into he married one of her cousins mentioned something about how we've been doing this we've been having these gatherings since before there were kids and now it was this was actually kind of an interesting experience because it's been about four years pandemic since we really. It hasn't been four years since the pandemic, but it's been four Christmases since we really got a big group together like this. 
which means that there were a handful of kids, but they were small kids. And now there are a lot of them and they're a lot bigger. They're a presence now. Christmas is about them now. And, and what this guy was mentioning is that we've been doing this before, since before there were really any kids. And, and, and when, when, when we, my generation, our generation, were the kids. And I think in light of the, what's been coming through for me about generosity being the source of our abundance, the most amazing thing is to is to be be in contact with i mean right now like my generation is the middle of the sandwich there's the older generation and then there's the younger generation and it was really i i also happened to randomly catch a sadguru video yesterday in which he was talking about how a child inhabits a portion of their parents. There's a space in the parent that the child inhabits. And of course, Sadhguru being this yogi wizard <laughs> knows like about what age that starts and about what age it ends. And there's a whole kind of like yogic science to how that connection forms and eventually dissolves so that the human being can go be independent but it was remarkable to be in that middle generation yesterday kind of fresh off this Sadhguru insight and 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 just see those connections see my connection to the older generation and see the younger generations feel their their inhabiting of 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 my generation and Interestingly, Sadhguru also says the older generation can't inhabit the younger generation. It doesn't work that way. The younger generation inhabits the, the, the past. We can inhabit the past, but we don't get to inhabit the future, which I thought was a really interesting. Um, potentially not necessarily intuitive um, description of how this works, of how the sort of spiritual lineage works. But it was just cool to be among this huge group. And we were all, we all sang Dona Nobis Pachem, which is our grace at one point. And Annalise stands up and <laughs> so Katie said a few words and then Annalise stood up and said, I want to tell the story. She wanted to give a speech. Didn't have a story prepared. Didn't know what she was going to say. Just knew I like this position uh, of all eyes on me. And, and to feel, you know, 40 or 45, however many people were in the house, let our focus go there and treat it with care. And then... It was just a really beautiful, delicate, gentle, and caring membrane that seemed to that seemed to that seemed to be holding us. And I think, you know, as I reflect on what What feels like a moment of not, it's not you know a gener generational change isn't really a thing in the sense of a moment it's obviously a process and it's obviously kind of a long sweeping kind of like you know ramp up ramp down you know it's not something that that happens from one day to the next although I can imagine circumstances in which it would but <clears throat> As I as I kind of witnessed that, but but and yesterday felt like a moment of acknowledgement. It wasn't that the process all happened, but it felt like a moment where a lot of us acknowledged that we had come a long ways since the last time we checked in. And 
seeing members of an elder generation who are truly happy and who who've given themselves to life in a way that results in a in an incredible abundance in an incredible just richness that's a huge thing to witness and it's a it feels like a a really a really for me it feels like the the right sentiment or an important sentiment or just a beautiful sentiment to frame this holiday and this ritual of giving each other presents, giving each other gifts. But to take it to that level and to see it from that altitude as something that really does end up shaping a life. You can see the evidence of this. You know, there's a great saying in Qigong, which goes, who has the best Qigong? Who is old and happy? They have the best Qigong. <laughs> And I've always loved that because we can get so obsessed, we, uh -huh, wink, wink, can get so obsessed with technique and discipline and regularity and consistency and depth of practice and time invested and, you know, all of which is actually important for, for practice on one level. But the ultimate test you, that's why I love this as a as a kind of as a as a summary. The ultimate test is well, when you get old, are you still happy? Have, what have you produced with your life? What have you done with your life? What have you done with your energy? If you've used your energy well, you'll be happy. That's the best you going. And I think seeing that in so many of the elder generation yesterday and sort of realizing oh that's what we're i'm doing now we're doing now was just powerful and really made this a really special a really special holiday a really special year <sighs> so now we get to go have more fun we're only halfway through the presents i think the kids are gonna be pounding on the door here soon but thanks for watching people so much love i appreciate you i'll see you soon